Just about any evening in Southern California, you can observe dolphins near shore and in the waves. One could say they are the masters of the surf zone. But as I make more and more observations, I soon realize they are not alone in this place. Because young great white sharks spend so much time near shore, they too are masters of waves in their own right. While white sharks don't have the same acrobatic displays near shore as dolphins, they navigate within the surf zone in ways that are equally beautiful. So why are these great white sharks in the waves? There are a number of reasons why great white sharks are near shore. One reason is that they are attracted to the water temperature. Great white sharks prefer water temperatures roughly between 54 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The areas in and around the shoreline generally contain water temperatures in this range. Juvenile great white sharks are ectotherms which means that their body temperature is regulated by the surrounding environment. They need these warmer water temperatures to maintain their metabolism and to function properly. The shoreline is also an area that offers protection from predators, namely other great white sharks. Overall, the water temperatures and the protection from predators make the surf zone an ideal habitat for these young sharks. But there is another reason they are found here. Prey abundance. They are attracted to the food sources that are found in these areas. The surf zone is home to a variety of prey animals, including stingrays, leopard sharks, and fish. These animals are a major food source for juvenile great white sharks. It is in this zone that you can often see a white shark strike its nose into the seafloor to scoop up a ray sometimes right next to an unsuspecting surfer. There are some things that can only be viewed from a bird's perspective. Do you see it? Up close, it's barely noticeable, but the higher you go, it becomes visible, sometimes in breathtaking fashion. The lines you see beyond the shark are referred to as vortex trails. They are caused by the way the shark's body moves through the water. As the shark swims, its body displaces water, creating a wake. This wake is made up of a series of vortices, or spinning columns of water. The vortices are caused by the difference in pressure between the water on the front and the back of the shark's body. From above, it resembles a rocket plume. The water on the front of the shark's body is under more pressure than the water on the back, and this creates a force that pulls the shark forward. The resulting vortice helps to stabilize the shark's body as it swims. The size and shape of the vortex trail can vary depending on the size and shape of the shark as well as the speed at which it is traveling. Larger sharks will naturally create larger vortices, and sharks that are swimming faster will create more vortices. Needless to say, it is often beautiful to see. Interestingly, the vortex trail can be affected by the water temperature and the salinity of the water. I've noticed the trails seem to be more pronounced in denser, colder water. The vortex trail behind a shark has applications beyond the study of sharks. Vortex trails and how they function are now being used to create new technologies. For example, scientists are using the vortex trail to develop new ways to propel underwater vehicles. The study of the trails are leading to the development of new ways to filter water and even to generate electricity. As an observer, I find these scenes mesmerizing. However, there is something else in this scene that sparks my interest, something I'd never really realized. 
while filming the vortex trail, I came across this particular shark. As I get closer, notice its color, notice its patterns. It's a bit different, right? It is so different that the shark almost looks like a different species. When I film great white sharks, they typically look like this, sleek, clean, and gray. Some have unique patterns along their sides. Others have scars and markings that help us identify individuals. But why are some so different in color? For example, look how dark this white shark appears. There are a few reasons for this. One is natural variation. Just like humans, animals can exhibit variations in physical characteristics, including skin pigmentation. Some great white sharks may naturally possess a tan or brownish coloration due to genetic variations within the population. Another reason is similar to humans as well. It's sun exposure. Exposure to sunlight can affect the skin pigmentation of great white sharks, much like it does in humans. Sharks that spend much more time near the surface or in shallower waters may experience more sunlight exposure, which can cause their skin to darken or tan. So this shark may actually be spending more time in deeper water than some of the others, hence its lack of darker color. These factors are especially visible in leopard sharks. While the shade of color in a leopard shark is partly due to age, studies have suggested they do change their shade as a result of sun exposure. So sharks do get a tan. They make vortices, and they particularly like surf zones. <laughs>